All right, in section 4.2, we talked about relative extreme points. Relative extreme points talked about on a graph, the area close by um, a particular point, is it the biggest value or is it the smallest value in that area? In this lesson, we're actually talking about absolute extreme points. So if you take my analogy that I talked about before and we looked at relative extrema in terms of heights, right? Relative extrema in terms of heights would actually say that I'm really neither short nor tall. I'm really not, right? Because if you put me with every person in the entire world, I'm not the tallest and I'm not the shortest. I'm somewhere in the middle. Now, that said, there is a tallest and there is a shortest. Like that exists in that context. Now, for what we're working with, we're actually going to be working with graphs for the most part that are closed off. They have a closed off end in one direction or another. So let me show you what I mean. That's solid. So let's say that this graph looked like this, where it started on the left and it stopped on the right. It does not continue in either direction, okay? It stops. There's no arrows saying, and it goes on forever. It actually has a starting spot and an ending stop spot. All right. Let me make it a little bit different because I meant to make this a little bit higher. Let's go with that. Okay. So if I'm looking at this graph and I want to know the absolute maximum value, that means I simply want to know the biggest y value that's on the entire graph. And if that's what I'm looking for, it's right here. This right here is the absolute uh, maximum. Now, there's another location over here that is a maximum. It's just not an absolute maximum. What is that location? Yeah, it's a relative max. Still a max. Still a big Y value. It's just not the biggest. And if you take a look, there's a location, maybe roughly about right here. And this one would be the absolute min. <laughs> Notice, it's also a relative min, right? In a nearby area, it is still a location where it has a sm smallest y value. We would not call this location up here a relative min. Um, and the reason that we wouldn't is because it doesn't have that derivative of zero. Right? If the graph were to have continued, there's no reason to believe that it actually you know, tapers off and goes back down at that location or something like that. But what I want you to see from this graph is that there's two possible places where you can have absolute extremas. So absolute extremas they could be relative extremas. Right? Like this one. Definitely could be possible. The other possibility is that it could be an end point, right? The starting or the ending of something going on. Okay, so I know you guys go through, at least probably most of you have, um, is it called intro to business where you create a product and you have to sell it to people? What are you talking about? Okay. So if I remember right, because my son has had to go through that as well. He did it during quarantine. I don't know, maybe some of you guys did it during quarantine too, um, which was pretty tricky. Um, some of the things I think you have to do have to do with analyzing like your, your cost and the profit for doing so and stuff like that. Am I, am I hitting on it more or less? I'm not a business major, but okay. there's like, some of that that you have to look at, right? It's like a sharp Okay. So... <laughs> Any time that you were to create a product, you have to figure out what kind of a price to sell it at. So we do this when we sell goat shirts, like trips to go, when trips go to the, um, go overseas for mission trips, you want to try and figure out what profit you want, or not what profit, what price point you want your shirts at. You don't want them so low that you're not making any money on the shirts, but you don't want them so high that people won't buy them either, right? There's like this sweet spot that you have to figure out what it is. So at the very minimum, nobody buys it. That's bad. 
But on the other extreme, they're all bought up and people would have paid more and that's also not good. Okay, so there's those extreme, those are the end points that you have to consider. What's the least, what's the most that don't make sense beyond that? That's the end points we're talking about. And what you're probably looking for in that kind of scenario is really not either of those end points in that scenario. You're looking for something in between, a relative, hopefully a relative maximum point of placing, getting profit, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at. And very specifically, this is actually how you go about doing this. This is talking about those same values I just did. So when we are finding extrema in general, the first thing to look for is all the values where the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. That's what we did in 4.2. So in 4.2, we stopped at part one, step one. Actually, we stopped at step two because we did that too. Step two was to examine the graph to decide if it was a max or min. We, we did that in, in 4.2. Okay, we decided it's a max, it's a min. Step three is the new part. Step three is to test the end points and all the values from step one to determine which one's the absolute max and or absolute min. So we'll do one that's just numerical, kind of a number crunching process, and then we'll do one that has legit context, okay? I think most of you are getting close. Are you good, Lauren? Mm -hmm. Okay. Martin, are you okay? Can we go to the next one? Okay. All right, so here's our example, first example of these. Consider the function f of x equals 0. Point, I'm sorry, 0 0.04x cubed minus 0.88x squared plus 4.81x plus 12.11. And it says find all relative extrema. So, Relative extrema, which is the step one part, means finding where does f prime equal zero. So our first step is to find f prime. I should probably use white. It's easier to read. All right, so what's the derivative of 0 0.04 x cubed? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. 0.12 x squared. What's the derivative of negative 0.88 x squared? Mm-hmm. And the derivative of 4.81x. Right, 4.81. And then what's the derivative of the 12.11? Yeah. That's zero. So I don't necessarily have to write that. That one's zero. My goal then is to set this equal to zero. So we're going to practice because we did this in the last section. We're going to go to your calculator. You're going to put that equation in y1 and zero in y2. So this is y1 and y2 is zero. Uh, and I did zoom six, and in doing zoom six, I don't have enough of my graph. Let me just roughly draw what I'm seeing. Looks something like that on my screen. Um, there's an area over here I need to see because I need to see it crossing the axis again. So I'm just gonna make my window a little bit bigger. So instead of going from negative 10 to 10, I'm gonna go from negative 10 to 20. And in doing so now, I actually see this graph. It's not quite that sharp, but it has that space, same basic shape. Is that okay? So there's two x values I need to find, this one and this one. So we'll do second calc, intersect, 
and find the first one. So this first point that it found for me is x equals 3.633. And if I do second calc, intersect, and then for the guess part, I move a little closer to the other side. Um, this one over here, I have 11.034. That's crammed in there awfully tight. Um, that's better. Zero, three, four. Um, so those are my two relative extrema. So I've got x equals, what did I say? 3.633. Um, hang on, let me just write that differently. I'm going to stop. 3.633. That's my x value. We're going to get the y value here in a second. And then the other one was 11.034. Okay, in your calculator, in y equals, if you wish, that's where I'm going to put mine. I'm going to put my other equation. I'm just going to put it down in y3. I don't think I'm going to need it all that much, um, but I'm going to use it for the moment. So I have 0.04x cubed minus 0.88x squared plus 4.81x plus 12.11. And what I want to do is I want to put each of these x values into this equation to determine whether I have, what, what my y value is. It's an ordered pair point, right? A relative extrema is an xy ordered pair. It's a location on my graph. So it's not just the critical location or critical number. It's the actual location on my graph. So I'm just going to use my table, and I put in the x values that I found. So 3.633 and 11.034. And I want to look at y3 because that's where the equations uh, that, I'm, that I've put in actually is located. So the first one was 19.888. And the second one is 11.779. And I need to know, is it a max or a min? Well, one way to do that is to graph the original equation. We did that in the last section. So we can take y equals, I can turn off y1 and turn off y2 if I'd like. And if I graph it, what I see happen is that it's going uphill, and that's actually all I see. But I gotta know what's happening next, right? If these are negative values, it must be going downhill at some point. And these are positive values, so it must be going back uphill. The graph has to look like this, even if it's not showing up just yet in my screen. And if you want to change your screen until you actually see it, that's fine. It's going to have this general shape, though. The first location is a max. And the second location is a min. Okay, so part B is kind of my favorite question when I get these um, because they're so nice and simple. Um, they're just checking what I already did for part A, the relative extrema. So I already have half of the problem done. 3.633 comma 19.888 and 11.034, um, 11.779. And the endpoints. Okay, so I need the endpoints of this graph. And they tell me the graph is going to go between 0 and 16. So the other two points I need are 0, whatever, and 16, whatever. So I can go back into my table and I put in 0 for x and 16 for x. And I will end up getting 12.11 at 0 and 27.63 when I plug in 16. Okay, so these are my four options. There's not always four. Um, maybe there aren't two locations where it peaks and valleys between your interval, that's fine. But there are four on this one. Notice also that these two locations are between my endpoints. 
That doesn't always happen either. They could have a peak or a valley outside of the area that we're looking at on the graph. So I need to make sure, and that's the first thing you could do, is I could eliminate something that's actually not on my interval. But this, these both are on my interval. So here's what we're doing. We're looking at these four y values, and we're asking ourselves which one's the biggest and which one's the smallest. So let's start with biggest. Which of those four y values is the biggest? Yes. So this one would be considered the max because it's the biggest y value. Which one of all those values is the smallest? Aha, the 11.78, this one over here, right? So it ended up not being one of the endpoints. It could have been both of them. Could have, both of them could have been endpoints, but it just wasn't on this one. So when I'm identifying my extrema for an absolute max and an absolute min, this one is my absolute minimum. And this one is my absolute maximum. And I'm just comparing y values to make that decision. Okay, we're gonna do a science example. You ready? Science, I don't know, physics maybe? This is probably considered physics. Let's check it out. Suppose the flow rate in cubic feet per second, CFS, of a river in the first 11 hours after the beginning of a severe thunderstorm can be modeled as F of H equals, in the given equation, CFS, right, cubic feet per second, H hours after the storm began. What were the flow rates for H equals 0 and H equals 11? In other words, what's the flow rate at the beginning? What's the flow rate at the end? So have you guys experienced this? Have you seen the waters go up in a river when, the, when thunderstorms come in? I have. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy to watch, especially if something comes in and is really heavy um, and it moves through very quickly. Those waters change very quickly. So on this problem, it just wants to know the flow rate at 0, so f of 0, and the flow rate at 11, so f of 11. So we're going to use our calculator. Go ahead and clear everything out. We're going to put in our equation of negative 0.86. We will, of course, use x, so x squared. I'm sorry, cubed, x cubed. Minus 8 point, oh, sorry, plus 12.05 x squared. Minus 8.95 x plus 123.02. And we're just going to go on our table, and we're going to put in 0 and 11. So when I put in 0, I have 123.02. And when I put in 11, I have 426.565. What are the units on the things I just found? Somebody's saying it. Cubic feet per second, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right here. Let me get that circle right at this. That's the abbreviation for it anyway, CFS, cubic feet per second. So I need CFS, this is my units, oops, at the end of each of my values. On part B, we're going to find out what is the absolute extrema. When in the world actually is the water moving the fastest, and when is it moving the slowest? Right? If the water is moving the fastest, you don't drive through it. Right? Think about water running over roads. If the water is moving through the slowest, then you might be safe to do so. So that's what we're actually calculating on this problem. It wants the absolute extrema. Well, we have the end points. Those are points under sort of observation. It might be possible that it's happening at zero, one of those two values, which is 123.02. Or it might be possible that 11, which is a very large value comparatively, right? What was my number? Is that what the numbers you have? It's not the number on my paper, but I don't know. I might have typoed something either today or yesterday, or the last time I did it. 3.86x cubed, 12.05x squared, 
Ah, yep, I have a typo. Nobody wanted to say anything. All right, let's fix my values. The first one's correct still. The second one is not. The second one should have said 337.96. Okay, that's fixed now. That's good. So those are two possible answers. I mean, it could be that the first one's the minimum, the, the second one's the maximum. That could just be what we have. But we won't know that until we test for other things. What in particular do we need to test? Well, we need to test where is the derivative equal to zero. That's what we have to test. So we're going to have to take the derivative in order to do that. So I'm going to come back over here. This is my derivative I'm trying to take or my equation I'm trying to take the derivative of right here. So I need 0.86 times 3. I have 2.58. Um, yep, negative, thank you. Um, X, or sorry, H squared. And then, Paula, what'd you say it was next? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And we want to set all of that equal to zero, right? So this will be y1, and the zero will be y2. If you don't want to put in y2 and y1 and y2, put it in y2 and y3 so that you don't clear out your original equation. We, we will need it later. So it might actually be better to put this in y2 and this one in y3, to be honest. So negative 2.5. 5.8x squared plus 24.1x minus 8.95. Zero. Uh, my window is supposed to be from 0 to 11 because those are the endpoints. So if you would like for your window just to just go 0 to 11 and then hit graph, that would be reasonable. And on my graph, what I see right now looks like this. which is probably pretty much good enough. It's these two locations that I'm concerned with. So I can find the intersection by doing second trace, number five. Um, it gave me this one first this time, which was 8.954. And then the other one is uh, 0.387. So those are my two possible points that also have a max. So I'm going to do f of 0.387, and I'm going to do f of 8.954. And we're going to test them into the original equation, just like we did the 0 and the 11. And the values I got, let's see, I have 121.311 and 391.604. Those are the outputs. So I have four answers to consider. Which one is the biggest? Yeah, the 8.9 one, right? This is my max. I'll write them out in a minute. Which one's my smallest? Yeah, this time it did not happen to have, uh, happen to take place at an endpoint. It's actually at the points in between. So my absolute max is at 8.9. Three ninety one point six zero four, and my absolute min is at point three eight seven one twenty one point three one point three one one. 
and that would be the solution that I was asked to find. Okay. You have to show me that you've tested all those locations, though. So you can't just decide, I'm not testing the endpoints on this one and happened to get lucky because it ended up not being the endpoints. Or I'm not testing the relative extrema and happened to get lucky and you ended up, you're, you have to show that you've checked them all and then made, a dec you know, made an educated decision based on that, not that you just kind of got lucky because you did half the problem and it happened to be the right half. Does that make sense? I have people do that all the time. So... All right, so like I said before, these two lessons are not due until after the test next Tuesday. So my suggestion for you would be to take the notes you took today, the homework that you intend to do later on this, and not do any more of it until after the test on Thursday. Test on Thursday, we will have an hour and 20 minutes in here to work through it. And if you do have any questions that come up between now and then that you want to shoot me an email and ask me, I would be happy to take a look with you. Do you remember that today and tomorrow are your last days for your gateway? So unless you and I have an other arrangements and you know if that's you and me, um, then tomorrow is your last day. So today, I'm headed back to my office here in just a minute, and then after today, you'll have also uh, tomorrow. How do I join 